Hey, what's going on you guys? This is Ebots today, coming to you with a new video. Actually, I haven't made a video in like a week or 10 days, I think it's been. I don't know, let me look. Um, 23rd? Yeah, so it's been like 9 days. So, I figured I'd just come to you guys with a, like, the last couple tutorials I've made have been involving Element 3D, and a lot of people still have questions like, hey man, you're doing a lot of advanced stuff in Element, I still need some of the basic stuff. So that's what I'm going to go through today, just a couple basic tutorials about Element and just how to make some like nice looking 3D text and maybe even like add some motion tracking with it. So um, I'm going to start off by importing the uh, clip I'm going to, or the cinematic I'm going to use for the motion tracking, which is this one I think. Let's see. Yeah, that's what I'm going to use. And then I already have this pre-tracked in uh, Buju, so once this imports, like I, I made a tutorial in my video involving motion tracked particles on how to go through and do all the tracking with Buju that works with After Effects, so I'll put a link to that in the description. So if we go in my motion tracks, I have that here, and that's all good. So if we open this up and then just drag our cinematic into here. You can see that we have these null objects that are lined up with and follow our scene pretty nicely. So, I guess let's get started on some element. So first thing you're going to want to do is make a new solid by either going to layer new solid or just hitting command Y or control Y. I'm just going to call it element. Then hit OK. Just make sure it's comp size. Okay, so now what you're going to want to do is go to your effects, video copilot, and put elements on there. And sorry, my computer's been a little slow lately. I don't know what's going on. So, as you can see in element, or once we get our element layer on there, it goes back to a transparent layer, like our, goes from black to uh, back to transparent. Now, Element's pretty cool. What you can do is you can extrude, like, custom masks or whatever you really want in Element, as long as it has, like, a path. You can extrude text objects. So what I'm going to do is, what, well, what you do to extrude text objects is make a new text inside After Effects, nothing to do with Element, and then just write out what you want to make your text as. I'll try Tutorial. So then what you're going to want to do is just hide that layer and go into element and go into your custom layers tab here and then go to custom text and masks and then select the layer that your text is. Now nothing will show up quite yet so what you have to do is go into your scene setup. Uh, right. Now once that comes out you're going to want to hit the extrude button here and as you can see your text will come up all extruded and such and that looks pretty cool now under the presets tab of bevels there's quite a few like preset text with textures and stuff so generally I just use these if I really want to I would go in depth and make my own but these are just quicker so I'm gonna select this one looks pretty good and what you can do is if you really want you can change the environment by if you turn this on and uh, if you hit the environment tab here what I generally do is I just do like studio warm like that so that way you can see on some of your reflections the like studio shows up and looks pretty good so what you can do is turn off draft textures take a look at this so this looks pretty good. That's really all you have to do inside Element for this. So if you hit OK, you can see that your text shows up off to the side here. So if you, but if you like scrub around, you can see that it just kind of floats way off in the distance, and it really isn't lined up with your track yet. So what I like to do is you can take a look at the position of your null objects, and then you can go into your Element layer, go to Group One and your particle replicator which is just like your world position settings and you can 
copy these positions onto here. So it doesn't have to be exact. You could just do like 60 and then 0 and for the position Z, push that back a little bit, maybe like 50-ish. And maybe 150. So now if you look at this, it's still not quite lined up. Like something is just moving a little bit. So probably push that forward a little bit. And our particle's pretty big. So if we go under our particle look, we can change the size to like 7. Now we can line it up in the center of our text here. Or in the center of our little like boat house thing, I don't know what it is, and just line it up like that, move it a little bit, like so. So now, as you can see, all of this is tracked and it looks quite nice. Now the problem I've run into with Element is that if you zoom in here and look at it, it doesn't come with any shadows and the textures look pretty poop. Like, I mean, the textures themselves don't look poop, but it doesn't look very realistic. There isn't any shadowing that goes with it. Now, a thing to make it look really good as far as shadows go is enabling ambient occlusion. Now, I'm not going to do that because it just really increases the render times, and um, my computer honestly can't handle it. It takes like five minutes to render one frame with ambient occlusion on. And just for the sake of this tutorial, I'm not going to put it on there. But I have come up with a way to just kind of get a realistic looking shadow under there. Now there's a couple ways you can do this. You can either the first thing I did was well the first thing I tried was making a new solid and just black is fine and then making that solid 3D or no, uh, 3D by hitting this box right here. So as you can see, if you zoom out, your 3D layers is somewhere off in space. So what I did is I went to the position, and then I copied the position of the null by just selecting it and then copying it, and then put that position onto our solid that we just made and pasting it. Now, you know, we'll use this null's position instead. I like that one better. Now, as you can see, our solid is pretty big, so we're going to tone that down quite a bit, like say 25. And now what we could do is rotate it. If we go like that, maybe then. So if we look at it over here, you want to rotate it so it's like even with the surface that your text is sitting on. So if we could do maybe like negative 90, and um, otherwise that looks pretty good. So now you're just going to want to move it right underneath your text. Oh, and you're going to want to have this layer below your element layer. And now what you can do is you can just grab it and scale it to the size of your text. So that looks pretty good. And now what you're going to do just move it in a little bit. Move it in like such. And now you can take this tool right here, like the mask, like the shape mask tool, go to rounded rectangle and then double click that. So what that'll do is it'll make a mask around our solid that we just made. So if you hit F, and then turn up the feather of that, you can see that actually we're probably going to want to expand that quite a bit. Uh, where is it solid? Oh, it's this one. You're going to want to expand it out a bit, like that. And then turn the feather way up, like such. Now, that doesn't, like, as you can see, there are some sharp angles on there. So, I'm actually going to turn this down quite a bit under here. And, you know what, I don't like the feather idea. Let's add a blur effect. So, if we go to blur, 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 
We could try a radial blur, which will like send it outwards from the middle, but that doesn't look very good at all. Or we could try a fast blur after we do that. So we go to layer, blur, fast blur. And if we extend it like that, maybe turn down the opacity a little bit, like sub, go 75. There, now if you look at it, you can see that it's not a perfect shadow, but there is a shadow with our text, so it actually looks pretty good, and with ambient occlusion, it'll look even better. I'm not going to put that in there just because of the fact that it takes forever and a day to render. And um, the reason I like using Element 3D over like a 3D program like Cinema 4D is that you can make changes without having to render it out all over again. Like my computer is pretty crappy, so it takes me a good like six to eight hours just to render twenty seconds of Cinema 4D if I have like global illumination, ambient occlusion, all that on. So it's a really a hassle if I want to change a quick setting or something, like maybe a material color or something, and you have to go through the whole eight hour process of rendering it again. Like the thing I like is you can just go right back into Element, go into your scene setup, and change the material right away. So, if I were to choose this one, it would just automatically change, update, and stays in the same position and everything. And there's a lot of cool things you can do with Element, but I'm not going to get into that. I'll probably do some other advanced things with it down the road, but uh, stay tuned for that. So, um, that's pretty much it for this tutorial. Um, thanks for watching, and um, subscribe for more.